And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Well, happy, happy, happy Wednesday to you. It is the Weighing In Podcast, and we are coming to you live. Well, not really. We're taped delayed. But we're going to come to you with what's going to be happening in the world of MMA, all kinds of things. A lot of fights announced. We have a very lackluster UFC coming up this weekend. It's not a whole lot to look at and go, wow, I'm really excited. But what do you figure? you got a pay-per-view coming up, and you just had a pay-per-view. So you got to have something in the middle to get some guys some fights. That's the kind of things that happen. My man Josh has been living in Texas and loving life ever since he has gone to Texas. And he especially loves the weather because he's an indoor dad now. <laughs> oh, man. My my daughter is just out of control. Just forts upon forts inside my house. I mean, they have been, forts. They've been sleeping in him and, and uh, or sorry, her and her brother have been sleeping in the forts out in the living room. We have guests coming this weekend. So... Now we're like, okay, you guys got to take them down. They're like, no, no. And the good, good thing to guess. Do you realize how hard it is to build those forts? It, it, it was a process. <laughs> they've got TV set up in them. They've got fans oh, set up yeah, in them. Dude, I mean, they've got it all. They've got. It's like a kingdom. It is. It's yours uh, too. It's mine. I own it. Well, and now you want to destroy it. You are the destroyer of dreams. We, yes, I can be sometimes. <laughs> we we have this huge sectional couch. So they've got it like propped up on its side and they've got the the two big ottomans that are there. They've got the the tent that goes over the top of the pole in the middle. They've got TVs in there, laptops in there. Not laptops, sorry. Ap- uh, iPads in there. Why does it say laptops? No, they got in iPads there? in there. They're hanging from positions. They've got fans, those little portable fans you hang around your neck that are hanging so they can get the breeze in there. I'm like, this is... This is next level. And then what they did was they basically put uh, all the stuffed animals as like their pillows. So like, I don't know, have you have you ever been to like Saudi Arabia or like any places in the Middle East, John? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So like when you go to, sometimes there's restaurants, you'll go and they sit on the floor. They've got tons of pillows. Oh yeah, most of them. Yeah, most, a lot of them you sit on the floor. And so they'll have tons of pillows around the edges, right? For you to kind of put your arm on or for you to lean on. Well, that's what it felt like walking into their into their fort. It was like stuffed animals everywhere. So you always had something to lean on. So it was pretty cool. Cool little setup. So I'm looking forward that's to them taking care of you. You see that? Because they know that you're getting older and you could break a hip being on the ground. Well, John. So they want a soft they want a soft little fuzzy elephant or horsey or something that sit there and break your fall have I, I think your kids are very kind have i told you the story on why because my daughter or my wife was very much like uh why like because i wanted a daughter so bad i was like i have to i want a girl i want a little girl i want a little girl and my wife's like why i'm like you well, want both first off my whole okay, family is boys there's yeah. 15 boys just on my dad's side. My oldest cousin's a girl. My youngest cousin, which is not my cousin, is my sister, <laughs> is there. Then there's 15 boys in the middle. So there's oldest is the is the female. The youngest is a female. There's 15 boys in the middle. My my dad was one of four boys. If my, my grandmother had four miscarriages, she would have had eight boys as she carried all the term. She <sighs> never was pregnant with, with a girl. So she would have had eight boys. Yeah, just crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> and so I think to myself, I'm like, man, I would love to have a daughter. Do you think I could? But the biggest reason my wife's like, why? Two boys, they can play together, this and that. She was, you know, but no. I was like, you know what? Because I've seen it too many times where the boy ends up getting married and then the wife takes over and you never see your son oh, yeah. anymore. Like, oh, absolutely. You know, they're, she's too busy moving her family in so you can take care of her family. I go, I need to have a daughter that will tell her husband, no, no, no my, fam- my mom and dad are moving in to be taken you take, care of. need to take care of pops here, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and it's funny because, um, like, there's times where I'll be like, hey, I'm like in bed already. I'm like, hey, I'm kind of thirsty. She's like, I'll get it for you, Papa. I got it. I got it. I'll get it for you. So, whatever it is, I love it. I it's love already it. already there. Yeah, because God, I mean, like my wife doesn't pamper me, so at least my daughter does. <laughs> it's great. I love it. No, she's awesome, man. She's she's a, quite the personality, as you know, John. <laughs> she's adorable. She's hilarious. I will. For anyone that has never seen Josh's daughter, first off, her personality is that of rainbows and sunshine because she's just all out there. But she is as cute as a button. She's she is absolutely adorable. I like her. I like her a lot. Before we uh, get started, make sure you guys subscribe, hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you guys for always uh, 
following us, keeping up with us. We've got some, we got one fan question. There was one person they wrote in the comments. So I actually screenshot it, said we would answer it. So I'm going to have John uh, answer that. George, you want to pull that up real Uh-oh. quick? We're going to start off with the show. That Is it going to be hard though? Nah. Is this test difficult? Nah, but then we'll, then we'll get into the uh, UFC talk and then, um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, do some, what else was there? Something. Then uh, we'll then we'll have some fun at the end too. There's a couple Let's little go. funny things that we're gonna do. There we so, go. but I want to apologize first though for the audio on the last weekend show. My bad. I just I must have had some complications with the audio and uh, let you guys down on that area. So, George, it sounds better today, is what you're saying. Got yes, it. Sir. John said the same thing. He said it sounded so good. It sounds beautiful. But I mean, the two of you guys were on the whole time and didn't say a damn word to me. So but it only sounded you. bad for I, one part, I, and I then said, it went away. I said it to you during the live stream. You told me oh, it was there good. It there it is. There it is. Oh, I'm good. I'm so good. Oh, man. I love you guys. I love you guys. <laughs> all right. All of our listeners want to thank you guys so much for continuing to support us. Follow us. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the bell, the notifications, and subscribe to our channel. I'll go ahead and read that uh, that question there, George. Okay, so we got a question posed by Scott underscore million. Oh, Dag- Scott's worth a million, man. Oh, yeah. Do All Dagestani right. fighters have Dana White privilege? I think yes. <laughs> Haha. Love the pod, though. Hope <laughs> Podcast Dave comes back soon. Oh, wow. That was a dig at you there, Dang. George. Yeah. Dang. I love Dave. They're digging Hope you're doing you. well, Bubba. Before we answer that question, that answer, this answer is brought to you by BetUS. We want to give you guys a lot of love over at BetUS. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support us at BetUS. Check out their odds. BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. You guys actually take a listen to us over the weekend. Uh, on the midweek show last week, you guys made some money. John and I had some good picks. I had two good picks. I came up short on one of them. Uh, but hey, even money with the Tony Ferguson. I went $600 on the house. Ended up crushing it. Six and six. Oh, man, that was a good one. I actually won money on the... Uh, I didn't. I don't bet on the Umar one. But I won money on another one as well. So... Good stuff, man. I came up short on one though, so but I ended up coming out probably close. To okay, twelve hundred bucks, John. Twelve hundred bucks. Can't can't go. Can't bet a thousand. No one's ever done it. Well, I usually Trust do. The, I used to do the punks parlay. It just came up a little. I didn't do it this time. I did them individually, and it worked out yeah. actually better for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. And you want to you want to answer that question there, John, with the uh, Dagestani white uh, privilege. <laughs> <laughs> first off, the Dana White privilege was first coined. By Tony Ferguson, I think was the one that actually came up with with that. And uh, and in, in some ways, I guess you know you could look and say that Dana does favor certain people. Who does Dana favor? Dana favors people that fight their ass off for him, don't give him problems, put butts in seats, and win fights, and usually win fights impressively. That's who Dana White favors. Dana White is smart enough to know and he's learned enough. Look at long ago when Dana first started, Dana wanted to try to favor certain fighters because that was, you know, I, I can plan things out. And he quickly learned you can't plan out real fights. You could have a guy that you know is going to win and he goes out there and the guy just smokes him. So Dana does not sit there and worry about who's going to win fights. What Dana does is he looks at the fighters and says, all right, who do I know that I can rely on to be where they're supposed to be at the weight that they're supposed to be and put on a good performance? That's what he cares about. And that doesn't matter if that comes from Dagestanis, Americans, Brazilians, Japanese. He cares about people that go out there and fight their ass off. That's what he's looking for. If you want to have Dana White privilege, be one of those people that do those things. And you, too, could have Dana White privilege. Yeah, if you want the Dana White privilege, I'm going to back up what John said, but I'm going to give you a little bit more context. No one says that Dan Miller has Dana White privilege. Or, sorry, Jim Miller has Dana White privilege. (laughs) Yeah, You know, Jim Miller, Joe Lazon. I mean, those guys. uh, Tony Ferguson himself. This is not Dana White privilege. What it is is they never turn down fights. You say, hey, I want this. They say, hey, I want you to fight this guy. He says, okay. That's what he does. And guess what else they do? They always come in on weight. They always show up to their appearances at the right time. Okay. They always are they're always there to sign autographs and shake hands and kiss babies for the fans. Those are the things that Dana White looks at. Are you giving me a hard time by showing up an hour late to a signing that I had people there waiting for? Is that you? Because if that's you, then I don't need it. That's not privilege. That's just being respectful. He understands what what lines his pocket. Don't waste my time. 
is what he's no. thinking. I put the yeah. effort and time and money into promoting you. Do yourself a favor before I stop promoting you. That's really what it comes down to. I think one of the things that you're, people are going to see is, th and this just happened, and so I'm going to bring it up. Uh, you know, uh, Mohammed uh, Mokayev had the whole thing where Dana said, well, I hope the PFL enjoys having a great fighter because we're done with it. Now, what was that whole thing about? Is it because Dana thinks that the kid can't fight? No, he knows the kid can fight. He knows the kid's good. But he knows that right now that kid at the age of 23 years of age is a pain in the ass to the organization. He's not on time. He doesn't do things the correct way. People have to sit there and go and do things to make things right. And everything is a struggle. And he's like, I don't need that struggle. You're a good fighter. Okay. And you know what? I'm not saying that, you know, you couldn't be champion someday, but we're not going to find out because I'm not going to put up with this. And that's a lesson because I'm telling you right now, Muhammad, Muhammad Mokayev will be with the UFC, but hopefully he learned a major lesson in that, man, you got to treat these people in the back with respect. Those people are there working for you. And they're not your servants. You got to treat people right. You got to be on time. You got to be on time for the fellow fighters. Everything, all of that. You know, I, I say it all the time, Josh. I'm going to say it one more time. Three things what the fighters have to do. First thing is you have to be on time. Second thing is you contracted for a weight. Make that weight. You said you would make it, make it. And the last thing is go out and fight hard. People put their hard-earned money down to watch you go out and fight. I'm not even saying you have to train. The three things you have to do, freaking be on time, make weight, and fight hard. Dana will love you forever. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, he, he takes into consideration the things that <clears throat> if his phone's not blowing up from his uh, interns going, man, this guy's not doing this. This guy doesn't oh, want to do this. This guy's being disrespectful to the waiters and the – it's like – I just, hey, I can't get the guy – I can't get this guy to the media scrum. Me yeah. It's like – it, Why does, I don't need the trouble. Why do I need to keep putting millions of dollars into, you know, or hundreds of thousands of dollars into this person if he's not going to yeah. do his part? You know, I, there there was, I, mean, I think with Mokayev, right, it really comes down to is he could actually cut him now at 23 years yes. old. And by the time he's 27, he'll go out and get some wins or he'll get some losses and we'll just fade off into the sunset. That's it. Or he'll get some wins and he'll be he'll back. get it. I think he's going to get his head on right and realize, oh, this could all be taken away from me. It's not all about just winning the fights. It's about doing everything right. And put yourself in that position to where, okay, now you can ask for the things that you want because you're the champ. Okay. But you, you got to be smart about it. Man. There's some guys, I'm, I'm going to let them remain nameless, is that there's some guys that Coker, I remember, just cutting. The, oh, yeah. They showed up. They won one or two fights in, in Bellator. And I remember the Strike Force days, too. And then, you know, as they got big heads, they decided they would do this. They would talk a certain way. They would act a certain way towards the staff. He's like, I don't got time for this shit. See you guys no. later. Well, as soon as they lost, he cut them. That it's a it. simple problem to take care of. Yep. You know, it's like, oh, you're, you're, you have multiple times. You have been a problem for my staff. So is it my staff that has done this? How many times with how many fighters? And I never have problems. Or is it you? That's what it is. Yeah, there's no privilege. It really comes down to, like, we're going to go back over it again. It comes down to fight your ass off, make the weight, show up to your appearances, be on time, be respectful. That's yeah. it. Be that person never tearing down fights. You got to, you know, unless if you're turning down a fight, it's got to be because I have a real injury or. Oh, well, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, you're you're really asking me to step up in a really crap situation. And I haven't been training at all. I don't want to get, I don't want to lose, you know, have my career turn a complete opposite way. Like with Dan Ige, he'd been training. He kind of, you know, he's like, look, I'm not in the best of shape, but I'm, he's been training. He's constantly yeah, training. He, was training. he understood yeah. what he was getting himself into three rounds. No, exactly. But, but that's, you look and that's a, I, I look at that. That's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That was an opportunity for Dan because Dan, Dan had a high and he had, he had sunk down a little bit, you know, with some of the losses and stuff. And it was his, his that was a good chance to go. <laughs> Yeah, pop himself right back up, and I thought it was a well planned ch uh, chance. And it, obviously, it didn't work out. He, he didn't get the win, but he didn't get a loss in the no. UFC's eyes either. He didn't get a loss in the fans' eyes. 
Uh, that was no. it. we thought he was the Superman flying in. So those <laughs> are the type of people that Dana White will start to not give privilege to, but start to put onto a pedestal. Like, hey, you did me a solid. I don't forget that, you know. Okay. And but there is a flip side to that too, John. Oh, yes, when the UFC is. says. Oh, I got you next time. Don't always believe that. Just know, like there was talk that, you know, Dan was supposed to be on the sphere card. He's not on the sphere card. That sucks. But they will look to try to make it right some other way, some other direction. Yeah, he'll get a ticket. Yeah, he'll get a ticket. (laughs) Yeah, that that too. He'll get a ticket or, you know, or they'll basically give him, you know, an opponent that they feel is a good matchup for him. You don't know and not guaranteeing that a win, but there's someone there. Hey, you can fight on this major card on the next big major pay-per-view in Vegas or whatever. That's going to get you more, more eyeballs. That's what's important. Fun fact. Dan Ige is booked for UFC 308 Toperia versus Holloway. He is fighting Lerone Murphy. Ooh, that's not a good fight. That's tough. That's That's not it. That was a tough fight. Okay. First off, that's not a good match. No, (laughs) it's a tough matchup. So I don't know. I don't know if Josh knew about that. No, one, I didn't know about it. The UFC definitely didn't do it. Dan Ige, any favors? No, but you know, maybe who knows? Maybe he got a little bonus in pay for the. Obviously, he got a bonus in pay for the last yeah. one. He probably maybe get a little bonus on this one. Or I'm just gonna look. I'm going out there. I, like I just, I've been in too many of these t- situations where it's not always what you think. Like, hey, maybe Dan wants to push himself. Maybe Dan believes that he can beat Lerone Murphy in terms of look. If I get him down to the ground, I can dominate the top yeah. position. Mm-hmm. We've seen him do it well, with, uh, you know, he was able to clip and and, and with uh, Barboza. Barboza's got some, he's got power, heavy kicks. I mean, you know, Danny has been able to do it with him. So yeah. there's plenty of, Dan is one of those guys that can fight. A stand-up guy can fight a grappler. He can take the fight anywhere. He's fun to watch fight. I'm going to always support him. I love that he stepped up on his last fight. I'm going to watch him every single time I get a chance. Got nothing but yep. love for the guy. So not to mention he's probably one of the most respectful people and individuals i've ever been around. oh what a great guy he's such a great guy Absolutely. i saw him at the gym when i was in vegas and he was at extreme i was at extreme couture's he was he was just training his ass off just as just normal things man you go yep he's back at yeah, the grind and you're just good, watching him he's a good dude good person man. danny is yes, one of the best is. if you ever get you had a chance to meet him man make sure you guys give him some love shoot him some shout outs over on his instagram and stuff he's a great dude absolute animal uh that was our question and uh let's go ahead and jump right into the ufc card do we have to? <laughs> John, 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 John. Uh, All right, we do have the UFC fight night, and uh, it is headlined by the fight that everyone has wanted to see, a fight that is you're such an two titans of the sport going at it. It's an amazing matchup, one that I will not miss. It's something I've been waiting for. Marcin Tybura from Poland taking on the... Man, the myth, the legend, Sergei Spivak, <laughs> who is absolutely a giant monster of a man. See, I think they call him the polar bear. The polar bear, mm. Sergei Spivak. Mm. So 16 and four against 25 and eights. You take a look and, you know, Spivak is uh, that guy who's, man, he's, he's good. He's tough. He's big. But last fight against that next level of fighter did not go good for him. That was a fight against Cyril Gaon. And uh, he lost that one, and it was pretty quick. I think it was the second round where he ended up losing it. But you take a look, and when you're looking at Tybura, here's a guy that, you know, he goes into fights, he gets hurt, he 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 holds on, he figures out a way through, he lets guys get tired, and then he puts it on him. <laughs> so he's a smart fighter, though. Mar- Marcin knows exactly where he's good. He knows his strengths. He's got actually got a very solid ground game when he gets you know on top of people they have a hard time with him he's got good ground and pound he's a solid fighter it's, this is the question of size wise Spivak is bigger he's a bigger man and if uh if Marcin ends up in the stand-up especially in a tight range stand-up one where they're uh, clinched and exchanging blows that way that's going to be hard on him to uh get get rid of Spivak but U.S. has Spivak as, as the favorite at minus 155. And Marcin Tarbura is a plus 125. You know what, though? If I'm going to take the bet on this, I'm probably going to take the over-under on this. It's three and a half rounds and even money on the over. Really? I think you're gonna, I think I'm gonna, I think they're going to end up getting some rounds. If Spivak doesn't get them out of there in the first round, you're going to see a lot of them hanging on each other. 
a lot of just grinding on it. The under on it at three and a half is minus one thirty. Well, I mean, if you and again, you you watch Marcin Tybura with a, with a lot of his fights. His last fight was against uh, Tai Tuivasa, and in that fight, you know, Ty's put big shots on him, hurt him, but he weathers the storm, yep. and he just starts to continue that march forward and. Heavyweights get tired when that guy when that guy is in front of you and he's not backing off and he's now coming towards you and now you, you're trying to catch your breath. It's not a good place to be. But I I agree with you. Rounds seem to be what he needs to get the win. So Spivak could get rid of him early. It's a possibility. So, you know, a couple of fighters have, but I would I would think that, you know, like I said, I do believe that Tybura has a very good fight IQ. He knows what he needs to do to win fights. And he's smart about it. And I think he knows that he needs to drag this into the later rounds to get a win. Well, I also think this Spivik coming off of his loss and not a great performance at all. And so, no. I mean, and so when you're looking at that, is he the same fighter he was going in to his last fight? Probably not. True. Confidence probably is not the same. So he may come out like a barn burner. He may not. But then if he doesn't, the more the longer the fight goes, I'm going to lean it towards Tybura. Now, I'm not going to bet – on who I think is going to win. But the longer the fight does go, I'm going to favor Tybura. That's one. Two is I'm probably going to take the over at three and a half because I think Spivik may be a little bit more hesitant after losing uh, to, to Gon. And he may be a little bit more like gun shy or he may try and get that, go out there and get it done right away and then gas himself out. And then you'll end up with two guys really just kind of hanging on each other for a bit, you know, because Tybura yeah. is someone that will walk you down, land big shots, but he needs more than one shot, you know, oh, more yeah. than he's two. Not, he's a he's a volume he's yeah. a volume puncher. Yep. No doubt about it. Yep. Right. Next fight. Oh, we've got this is a strange one for me. This is Chris Gutierrez, who we all know, damn good fighter. You know, got a well rounded game, beautiful stand up, taking on a newcomer. And when you take a look at this, Josh, this is a guy. First fight in the UFC taking on Chris Gutierrez. That's pretty impressive when you think about all the people of Chris Gutierrez. But Kwong Lee is coming in at 8 0, fought all of his fights, LFA. But I'll tell you what, that is a tough road to hoe going up against Chris Gutierrez in your opening fight with the UFC. Yeah, I've never seen uh Kwong Lee fight, so I can't sit here and Neither tell you yeah, how great he is. I can't tell you how much of a how how difficult he's going to be for Chris uh, Gutierrez. Chris though is this like when you're fighting someone you come in when they when you're fighting someone who that's their home, well, they feel so relaxed out there. They feel well, like they can get it done. Yeah, Chris Gutierrez was supposed to fight uh Javed Basharat. That was the fight and then I think Basharat wanted to fight MVP in the lobby. Or something, but I <laughs> don't know. But Basharat withdrew from this fight. I don't know why, but this was the replacement. So you know, they're they're you know having someone that you haven't really seen, like you know, Chris Gutierrez hasn't seen him or anything. That that's always a little bit nerve wracking when you haven't seen the person. You don't know where they're good and stuff like that. But you got to look and say, man, a tough, tough, you know, opponent in Chris Gutierrez for a guy coming into his you know, debut fight in the UFC. Yeah, but then with Kwon Ling, though, he's also going to be thrusted into the co-main event against someone who's a seasoned veteran in the UFC. That's a tough fight for him. <clears throat> Coming from LFA. You, That's what I'm saying. But you're starting to question yourself. You, you'll start to like doubt whether, okay, the guys that I've beaten, they're not on this guy's level. Or are they? Or, you know, where do I stand? I guess we're going to find out. Kwon Ling. Yes, we are. He's 8-0, which is good for him. Chris Gutierrez, yeah. he's going to grind. He's going to come forward. He's going to, you know, try to put pressure. He's going to, you know, use use all of his stand-up tricks. I mean, he's should be it should be an interesting fight. Kind of a crap situation for Chris Gutierrez, though, to be in, fighting a guy from the LFA on your first fight in the co-main event. Yeah. Yeah. It's a rough one, but we're going to see what it's like. Chepe Mariscal taking on the human pretzel. Damon Jackson, guy that's got a great ground game. Very solid fighter. Uh, this is one of those ones, again, you're looking at and you go, wow. Damon Jackson just had, you know, where he was way up there. And now Chepe Mariscal gets a fight with him. Chepe is good, good everywhere. Very tough. They call him the machine gun. But uh, he's got good hands. He's got a good ground game. He's not a good, good enough ground game, I believe, to stay with Damon Jackson. 
that's going to be a problem for him if he ends up with Damon Jackson on top of him or on his back. He's going to have to be defending uh, right away. But this is one of those fights that could go either way. Yeah, I mean, BetUS doesn't seem to think that way, though, though. They think Chepe Mariscal is a minus 215 over Damon Jackson at a plus 175. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> they also, two on the over and the under on this is two and a half rounds. It is the over at minus 125. And also, I guess it under is minus 105. Pretty much kind of even well, money, close to it. Look at Ch- Chepe's coming. When he came into the U- UFC, he's won three straight fights. So he's looked good. And, you know, one of them was, up, I believe, on a... a an injury where they stopped the fight, but he's, he's looked good. He had a close fight against, um, uh, what is it? I want to say Chartier. Hmm. Was it? Uh, it was Morgan, Morgan Chart- Chartier, something like hmm. that. I'm some, it's like that, but, uh, that was a close, uh, decision win, but man, we're going to see. I actually think Damon Jackson a, is a pretty good, you got to admit, Damon, if Damon's got a weakness, it's against guys that are really good in the stand-up. But, man, he can get it to the ground. He's he's clever, he's sharp, and his ground game is good. Damon can also take shots. Yeah. So he can take shots. Not too many. I know, but he can take shots to get himself into a, into a clinch position, you know, yeah. in a grind position. The other thing, though, I find it very hard that BetUS would do this to him. At plus 175, Damon Jackson is – now with that new hairline that he's got, I don't think that it really will work against that is him. So wrong. I, that's a hundred percent confidence that, builder. That, that should absolutely put you down another like minus fifty. John, that's building his confidence up. Man, he's probably out there just <laughs> slinging dick right now with that hairline. That's what he's out there doing now. You know, does well, Chepe get some of that? Maybe, dick? maybe that's what BetUS knows he's doing. Yeah. So he's not training. So they're going on oh, now. He's. He's all about the hairline now. Interesting, interesting. Should be, it should be uh, interesting to see how this fight works out. But minus 215 for Chepe over Damon Jackson. I mean, on the over, I would probably take the over at minus 125. Uh, but, I mean, this is one of those fights that's so evenly matched, I might even pass on it completely just because, they, you know, the fight could go either way like John was saying. Yeah. Next fight. All right, we got Danny, Danny Barlow undefeated still at 8-0 no, taking on Nikolai. I got to be able to say this. Vertenikov. <laughs> Vertenikov. Vertenikov, huh? Vertenikov. Oh, John. What do you think? I have never seen Nikolai Vertenikov fight. Neither have I. Danny? He, he lost on Contender Series, and then he picked up, I think, three victories in Harrison Rogers' UFL. Shout out Rampage Jackson. Yep. Always helping out over All there. All right, there you go. Well, I've watched Danny Barlow in the Dana White Contender Series, and I've watched him in the UFC one time. Look, we know that he can fight. He's good. And since I haven't watched uh, Nikolai fight, I really can't say anything about it. But, you know, being that they're making make, made it to the main card, this should be a fun uh, time for Danny Barlow it's What's, so early in his UFC Barlow's career. what, 8-0? Yeah, he's 8-0 yep. as well. Uh, he's got yep. power in his hands. Very athletic. Very, very good versatile. Very athletic. Yeah. And... I mean, what he, I believe what he fought Josh Quinlan, right? Had the win over him with the TKO strikes and the punches. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Not too bad. I mean, this is the guys, this is the kind of card you're going to get after two pay per views. You just had a pay per view last last week. And you got one coming up. Then you had an expense, you know, let's not, of course, Hanhagen and Umar Namagamedov are not cheap, by the way. So, oh yeah, and <laughs> so you got that one for free. That's where you're getting. That's where you're getting this card right now because they know they're going to spend exactly. a lot of money next week. That's exactly yeah. it. This is that one. That one costs a lot, but you know we got helped out with by our friends. But this one's all on us, and so we're going just a little bit light. Yep, yep. <clears throat> all right, we got Yana Santos used to be Kunishkaev against Chelsea Chandler. Uh, it's actually not a bad matchup. This should be a fairly uh, competitive fight. Ah. <sighs> All right, John, is there any other fights on here you want to talk about? I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. being honest, man. There's just, it's, it's not. It's pretty, yeah, pretty slim. I, I do like Carl Williams. I watched him working out uh, just recently and stuff. You know, he's he's a guy that actually could, uh, he could do stuff. He's got power in his hands. The guy can wrestle, which is unusual for heavyweights, but he's got to learn how to pace himself and do things. I was talking with those coaches about him and stuff. But um, he's a he's a guy taking on Yonta Dennis, who we watched before. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dennis, tough guy, 
But I think Carl Williams against Yonta Denise is actually a, a good fight in the heavyweights. That makes sense. Carl is uh, minus 205 on the bet US odds, and Denise yeah. is plus 170. The over on it is minus 205 at one and a half rounds. So, I mean, the under at one and a half is plus 170 if you want to take that chance. Carl's gotten rid of quite a few of his opponents fast. I think the last couple, though, he hasn't. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, hey, guys, that's going to wrap up our UFC talk, but let's have some fun with some other stuff. You know, there was a couple things. One of them Nothing. was <laughs> one of them was our boy Islam showing his, his uh, comedian background, his comical background there. And uh, there were, he was asked something recently about how, hey, someone that one of the reporters asked him, Islam Markachev, on what he would eat if he ever decided to bulk up to middleweight if he after capturing the welterweight title. He says, That's I easy. don't He said, I don't know. He said, I would have to ask DC for his meal plan. He would eat <laughs> Mohammed Mokayev. <laughs> Mokayev. <laughs> uh, I got to tell you guys, man, Islam is probably he his his comical background is probably drastic. It's very underrated in in the in the old AKA gyms. He's just so funny and it comes out so fluidly. He's hilarious, brother, 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 brother. Who this guy? <laughs> brother. He he don't say nothing. No ask no questions. What? Who is this guy, brother? <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I still got people sending me that clip. That. Well, but the best part about that whole thing was we were talking to him for 45 minutes yeah. before he goes, brother, brother, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also going to throw this out here, too. We just had Bilal Muhammad on there. So if you guys haven't seen that interview, he was on before his title fight, wins the title. But then there's been a little bit of like back and forth between him and Kamaru Usman. John, it's been a little it's been oh. a little weird. So it says Kamaru Usman, Islam is a good man, had to teach uh, Bilal. Teach him how to how to hold the belt. And then Bilal Muhammad replies back. He said he also taught me how to clean your finger fingerprints off of it. And then Kamar Usman basically replies back, says, Whose blueprint did you copy to help you win the fight? Damn, at least say thank you. And then Bilal basically comes back. <laughs> he, he comes back and says, I did what you couldn't do. I finished a job. I'll send you Bully's bl- blueprint PDF. Just enter your email and your credit card information. Ooh. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, but with the slick comebacks. Well, you know, this, Josh, this is what happens over time. You got to figure, because both of them, I think both of, both of them are managed yep, by, by Ali. Ali. Yeah. And so it's it's one of those predicaments for Ali. that he, And Ali, if there's anybody that's good at navigating this type of you know situation, <laughs> yes. it's Ali. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean... Camaro's in that place. Hey, this is not a bad, you know, time for him to say, "Hey, I want to, I want another shot at the title. I think I, I can win it." You know, Camaro is uh, he's still talented, <clears throat> and he's got the ability to wrestle with Bilal. He's got the ability to stand with him. They both, they both have great gas tanks. It would actually be a great fight. Mm-hmm. It would be an interesting fight. Now, the big difference is. Bilal is not now not only the champion, he's riding what a nine fight win streak, while Camaro is you know dragging on a three fight losing streak. You got to get a win before you can get even talk about fighting the champion. No, I understand that, but I mean he's still right up there. Kamaru Usman is right there at number two. He should I be. believe he should be. He's that good. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. I mean, look what he did with Chamayev in the third round. He was he was dominating that round. I dude, how many times have we talked about? It? I said, man, if that thing was five rounds. Yep. Kamaru Usman would have been your winner. Yeah, he definitely would have been you the winner. Really take a look at it. Would have dug deep. And yeah. I mean, the only other person that I think they're going to see in there is Shavkat. I think Shavkat's going to get the next title shot again. He's going to get it. Yeah, he'll get the Come next on. title. How can you, when you're taking a look at it, again, and nothing against, you know, Kamaru. I love Kamaru. I think he's a phenomenal fighter. He's a great person. But, you know, I would even I, we were together, you know, a month and a half ago, and we we're talking. I said, and he, he goes, he goes, oh, I, he goes, I know Shavkat's getting you know the next thing. He says, I got to get you know a win and stuff. He knows, mm-hmm. he knows what he's doing. You know, he's a smart guy. And uh, how do you not give Shavkat that title shot? He's undefeated. He's beaten everybody that they've put in front of him in the UFC. What's his What's his overall record now in the UFC? Eight no. Yeah, something like that. You know. You look and you go, that's the fight to make. 
I, 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 can't, it, it, it is, I can't see anybody else unless he gets injured. It is the fight to make, but he hasn't beat like a like a Usman. He hasn't beat a Colby Covington. He hasn't beat a Leon. He hasn't had to beat That's that top guy to why? get. To, guys don't want to fight him. We're, we're, there you he, go. He's fallen right into the Islam and the I, Habib. I was going to say, Umar. I remember this guy named I remember this guy named Habib, and then I remember this guy named Islam. You don't remember him, right? You're too old. And then you know, finally, there's this guy named Umar who. Yep. It took a guy like Corey Sanhagen to say, I'll give you that shot. Yeah. You know, not everyone wants to give that shot. They look and they go, that's a dangerous son of a bitch. I don't know if I want to fight him right now. Yeah, I'm not mad at that fight at all, though. I mean, I would like to see maybe a Jack Della Maddalena fight Kamaru Usman, maybe, to see yeah. if that ha- Yeah. That would be a great, dude. See, to me, Maddalena's on a good win streak. Mm-hmm. That would be a great fight for Kamaru to come back. Again, the UFC matchmakers many times like to bring, you know, a uh, guy with a you know a loss against another guy with a loss you know so someone comes out of it with a win mm-hmm. but i mean do you look sean brady looked phenomenal his last fight you see i think sean's yeah. coming up i think again for another fight here soon but sean after if he wins that fight i mean i'd like to see him try to jump up in there into that mix of maybe a colby covington would be a perfect matchup for him you know grappling wise you know the ability to yeah, stuff Col- wrestling on the feet i don't see colby fighting for a while yeah he just i really don't i don't know what he's yeah. waiting around for man this guy he's waiting for his career to walk by yeah it's pretty much walking by it's pretty much gone yeah. um anyways after, I, I like after the, the recent go ahead after the recent connor comments on or the chandler comments on twitter saying that him and connor's fight isn't happening you think Ooh. kobe and chandler could be a fun thing i mean it could be i mean i, I would love to see that fight kobe and chandler i mean is that I what chandler's that looking fight. to do though i don't know kobe's a little bit long for chandler his length would give Chandler, I think, because Colby can wrestle, and Colby can wrestle every bit as good as Michael Chandler. Um, yeah, I know, but we got to like I don't. I think Kamaru Usman was at Kill Cliff. You've got a ton of really good wrestlers out of Kill Cliff, and if Colby no wants to try to wrestle Chandler, he's I think he's going to struggle to get that takedown. And does Whoa. Chandler's power? And I, I think Chandler. I think that's a that's a textbook matchup for. Chandler. I think Chandler's speed. Yeah, I think he's faster than Colby. Okay, and he he's strong. He's a fucking fire player. Yeah, he is. But he does. If there's, if you're going to take a look, one of them is a marathon runner. Where Colby normally, generally, usually doesn't get tired in fights. He's able to push pace. And while one of them's a sprinter, and that's Michael Chandler, where he sprints and he puts out a ton of you know, you know energy and gets things done but then he's got to recoup Mm -hmm. you know you and i know exactly how he recoups and what he does as far as when he is tired you you know you watch what he does and stuff it's like it's it's an interesting fight but you know normally chandler fights at 155 normally colby fights at 170 you know does chandler go back to the 155s or does he stay with i was going to fight connor at 170 I'll, i'll fight somebody else at 170 yeah, I mean, he's probably been putting the weight on trying to get that Connor fight at 170. And so yeah. how does he get the weight back think. down? Or does he stay at 170 and try and match up with those fights? Because <clears throat> when I'm looking at 170, there ain't nobody in here outside of Colby that I would match him against. <laughs> There's a lot of studs at 170, dude. Not, you know, it's, not it's only not that, an easy one. but just stylistically, they're bad matchups for him. Yeah, That's the other thing. I mean, they're studs, but I mean, they're just bad matchups for him. And he's not a, he is thick. He's short though, five seven, maybe five six. You know, um, well, he's cut another inch off. He's, of him, he's not a he's not a tall guy. No, he's not. Tall. He's explosive. He's not. But I love I love the, I'd love to see that Colby Covington fight. That'd be a good matchup, definitely. And that's yeah. a money maker. If you want to say, hey, let's pick a money maker for you, the Colby fight against him is a money maker. Let's be honest. I, I'm also not opposed to be honest. I mean, I don't know if he's ready for that type of step up in competition. You brought it up. Uh, I was looking the other way with the Patty Pimlet and Connor fight, but I mean, you might as well go Connor and Michael, Ch- or not my Patty Pimlet and Michael Chandler. That's not a bad call. <clears throat> That's not a bad call out. Yeah, I don't. I mean, that you. We talked about it last week, and there on the uh, we talked about it the other day. It's a good yeah. fight. It is a good fight. It is. It's an interesting fight. If I'm the UFC, though, I'm looking to do the Patty versus Connor fight. Sorry, <laughs> that's the biggest fight you can make right there. I mean, that's what you can do. Uh, um. And I got one more question. Yep. If uh, Usman and Bilal have the same manager and they fight, does Ali get paid twice? Yep. <laughs> yes, he does. Damn. 
Yeah. That must be good. W- like, wouldn't you want? Wouldn't you want your fighters to fight each other then? Yeah, no, not really. <clears throat> Look, if there's a title on the line, you definitely are okay with it. But I think that's an understanding that you have when you sign multiple people at one weight class. Is you have that conversation. Look, we're gonna do events together, like Ali. Like we're gonna go to this event together. We're gonna sit as a team in a unit. You know, we're all managed by uh, his company. And then when we're done from there, we go our separate ways. And as you guys make it to the top, the understanding is we don't fight each other until we get to the title shot. We may have to fight it as a number one contender spot. If the UFC is not budging on it, we understand that, but let's try not to do this and make this happen until we get to the title. That's kind of the understanding. Well, Bilal is now the champion and Camaro sitting there at number two. It only makes sense for him to do it. I had this conversation with um, some of the media and, even with AK, you know, Javier and Bob Cook and those guys. There was a moment there where Habib had just broke into, I think, the top 10, or he was like number 11, 10 or 11. Somewhere in there, Habib had, and I was number three. Gray Maynard was number two or one. And everyone's like, oh, you may have to fight Gray. You may have to fight. And I'm like, what are we jumping the gun for? What, what happens if you have to fight Habib? They asked Habib, you know, your teammates, Gray and Josh are ranked down there. You may have to fight yeah. him. And the conversation is like, there's so much that needs to happen in between that process. One fight and it sets you way back. And it just ended up being where Gray and I both lost our next fights. So there was no more conversation anymore. <laughs> it was like, I said, look, if we get to the title, I'm not going to stop one of my teammates from living their dream. Their dream is to win the, the, win the title. That, that, that was never my goal was to stop other people from, from uh, winning their, you know, achieving their dreams. And so but we never got to that point. In this situation, I think with Ali, he handles it pretty well. Like if you're the champion, you're gonna he handles it really well. Yeah, you got to fight because, whoever yeah, comes your way, and that's 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 really what it is. He's smart in trying to keep them keeping them separated from fighting each other when they're down in the ranks. But when it gets to the, to the point of you know number one contender championship fight, that's what you're there for. Yep. I agree. My farm needs the earth, the air, and the water. I get my energy going on Element Electrolyte Drink Mix. Clean, good tasting energy that feeds me like I feed my plants and animals. And after a long day on the tractor, when it's time to shoot the podcast, I drink Element so that I can stay energized and stay salty. Let's get it on. Uh, John, there was this other thing that I thought was just funny because you and I both know Matt Hughes. We both know uh, his brother, but they're twins. And so I wanted to I wanted to share this a little real quick with you. I would do the audio through my phone here, but I thought it was a cool little um, setup. So apparently Matt Hughes, who was the welterweight champion, he has a twin brother. And while he was making way for his fight, it wasn't actually him. No. He used to get his twin to do it. <laughs> no, it's just a rumor. It hasn't been proven. If it is, oh, it's true, just a rumor. It's both genius and scummy in equal measure. Is he smaller? Or <laughs> it's both or genius or and scummy. Identical twin. Identical twin. But it's just oh, the fact that it's Matt Hughes doesn't actually make the weight. He can just go up on the scale. Yeah, because if he doesn't make the weight, then he's fresh as a daisy for the fight. So, like I said, it's, fresh as a daisy. I love it. Oh very, very intelligent. <laughs> but genius. cheating in any form is scummy, in my view. If you That's want to win a fight, star. win a fuck. That's the one way I'd say good cheat. Good cheat. Good cheat. About the UFC. Yeah. Okay, that's hysterical yeah. because if you know both of them, first off, the, okay, this is what's hysterical. Before I get into the whole thing, the conspiracy theories and how this shit starts with just a well, it could be mm-hmm. that Matt Hughes, you know, he was a welterweight champion, but he had an identical twin brother. Yep. And it's been said that possibly his brother Mark weighed in for him. Okay. Could it have happened in a low level fight? Sure. Yeah. Could have happened in a low level fight. What I'm going to tell you is ever since I knew Matt and Mark, they're twins, but they're absolutely, <laughs> you can tell them apart. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And the big part you can tell them apart is Matt normally had a pretty, you know, like we say, a little, uh, you know, buzz cut, fade kind of hairstyle. Mark sported the mullet. (laughs) Okay. So unless Matt was all of a sudden wearing a wig up onto the scale, that was definitely (laughs) not Mark. Okay. Uh, Now, 
their bo- body types were a little bit different. Uh, they looked a little bit different. I'm telling you, could it have possibly happened at some small little regional show when they were both very young? I'm not going to say that it didn't. I'm not going to say that it couldn't. I'm saying it never happened in the UFC. Yeah, there's just no way. I think if you're a fan, you could be a casual. You cannot be a casual. If you saw the two of them standing next to each other, you'd be able to point them out right away. They do not look alike that much. Well, they look alike. Yeah, they have they're, look, similar type They're identical features. twins, and they look very similar. But they're not. I, but there's differences between them. Yeah, and you'd be able to spot it out just by looking at them. Like, now, I just met... Uh, I met a, a friend of mine's two daughters. They are both, they're, they're twins and they're identical. They look identical. It was funny while I was talking to their dad and he was yelling their names. He was getting them mixed up as he's yelling their names to me, explaining to me how <laughs> identical they look. And as I'm looking at them, I'm like, I don't see any differences in, in you in between the two of them That's at all. Tough. That is not the case with Matt and Mark. Yeah. <laughs> that is not the case. No. Oh man. Uh, anything else there, John? Let me see. There was something else that I wanted to kind of throw out there that I thought was kind of funny. Let me see. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, this Bring is... Bring it up. I wanted to throw this out there because this was the last show. Cheeto was absolutely dropped in the third round, John. Absolutely <laughs> dropped in the third round. He was taken down twice in the first round. You and George... You can sit there and say whatever you want. I, you Go ahead. I want go ahead. everybody go ahead. to go remember ahead. this. Absolutely dropped in the third round. Okay, but... I'm okay with being wrong. Yeah, you, I, both I thought, you guys were shaking on, your John, head. Hold like, on. Question, question, George. Didn't he say second round? No, I said third. No. He said he, he said, said second. I said he? third. Let's not make this up. But <laughs> but the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and bag on myself too, because that's what I do. That's what I do. I know how to I play both sides. John was I wanna I wanna hear John, you were wrong. Okay. George definitely was wrong because he was shaking his head agreeing with you the whole time. I'm wrong a lot. <laughs> with his lips. If you guys don't know, George does this duck lip thing when he shakes and he agrees with John. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> That's what that that was George. Kiss ass somehow. That's gonna be my still shot image for the thumbnail, right? <laughs> but um, trouble. But I was wrong about Peter Yawn, and I even I even addressed that on the show. He had he fought in March. He hadn't fought in like I I said I think I said a year. And then we also said no, he fought in March. George March. pointed that out, I believe, in the show. We corrected it, guys. Okay, listen, I, most of you guys run to the comment section right away, just say like, "Oh, you guys messed up right here." Guys, my CT was not in full effect on Sunday. I was good. Okay. So I had one mess up. Okay. In, a, in an hour and a half long show. So, so you got the third round knocked down. I got the third round knocked down, but I messed up but on wasn't the. It, but was it a knockdown or was he just off balance? It could have been both, but either way, it was counted as a knockdown. It's a knockdown. It was counted as a knockdown. <laughs> John trying to skew it to the no, judges. No, I'm not trying. I'm just it. screwing with you. I get it. Just screwing with you. All right, hey guys, that's going to wrap up our show. But first, I want to give some love to my boy, Pat Tenori, who started off his new company called Tenori. Oh, there it is right there. It's a great new brand. He's the actually guy who, who started Ruka, the clothing wear, and uh, he broke off from them. He sold Ruka, and then now he is now creating his own um, clothing, clothing line again. It's hard to recreate magic a second time. Ruka was such a huge, wow. huge company, and uh, he's going to try and do it again. I like what he's doing. Um, check, out their, the, check out their website. Absolutely amazing guy. He works with a lot of top level. He was the first guy to sponsor one of the big, biggest MMA guys out there was BJ Penn. BJ BJ Penn? and him are close. You know, um, he's worked with. He was the first guy that put the the black belt on the on his on shorts. the shorts. Yes, yep. He, Love that. He's he has Love a very that. creative mind. He does great work. So if you guys get an opportunity, head over to Tenori. Check out their clothing, their gear. They're doing a different level from from the Ruka style that they did. He's trying to branch off and do something completely different. He's no longer with Ruka anymore. He's strictly doing Tenori. Love the love what he's doing right now. He took a lot of his uh, designers and artists, and he's trying to be creative in a different way. I like the product. I like the clothing. Love everything about it. Check them out, guys. Um, and uh, hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments. What you got there, George? Awesome. Also, I want to remind everyone to stay salty. Click that link in our description every single time you order, and you will get a sample pack of upcoming delicious, beautiful, hydrating, salty (laughs) flavors. Put it in your water. Put it with ice. Make sure it's ice that tastes the best. If you like the cans, make sure it's ice, but I like the powders. You take it on the go. Josh gives half half to his kid, and then he scores 50 
goals in soccer. 50 of <laughs> 50 them. Goals. Just off a of half a pack. 50 pack. goals. No, guys, if you guys check out the, the Element Sparkling, it's awesome. It's amazing. I like it a little bit more than the packets, only based on the fact that I can take it on the go. I can. They're already cold. They're cold like that. The packets are cool. So you can take the packets on the go. You can take the packets on the go, but you have to have a bottle of water with you then. Yes, so do. that's the other thing. So um, when I'm in a hurry, I just grab a can out of the fridge and then I take it with me, the sparkling, which is amazing. And then I also, for the packets, I'll take it from my son. He'll put, he'll do two water bottles, one with element, one without, just strictly water. And uh, I've noticed a big improvement in terms of um, his performances out there. Just staying hydrated is very important, especially right now in the Texas heat. It's going to be 103 tomorrow and 104 on Thursday. Then it drops oh, back wow. down into, into the mid 90s and I'm okay with that. When you start breaking into the three digits, when you get to yeah. 104, 105, you know, in the mid 104, 105, ooh, ooh it's getting hot. You know, it's funny because I we, uh, going back to Vegas, it was 110 degrees, 111. And I was like, feels great here. It is so much dry, <laughs> dry. heat is so much easier to yeah. deal with than humidity. Humidity just melts you. It's incredible. I mean, you know, you can use a little extra melting, buddy. I could use a lot of melted. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. Hey, hopefully, you, melted enough. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you guys enjoyed this show. I want to thank you guys so much. And John, take us away, buddy. For everyone out there, I hope you have a fantastic rest of the week. Be sure to check out the incredibly bland card that the UFC is putting out <laughs> on so Saturday. Weird. But there, uh, it is what it is. You got big fights coming up, so. For everyone out there, do something good for someone. Take care of someone special, and we will see you.